Okay, so understanding the types of fire alarm design that you have, um, th there's, there's three main groups. You've got a, a manual uh, system, a, a P type system, which is property, and an L type system, which is life safety. Um, in reality, property hardly ever gets used. Now, but if you start from the beginning, a manual system, every fire alarm system is going to have things like all the call points, which are the red boxes that go by the fire exits. They're placed by the fire exits, they're placed by each change of level, so at the top of the stairs. Um, and they're also put by every exit to the building. So that could be a roller shutter, it could be any way out of the building. And when you think of it, if you're in a building and the fire alarm goes off or you see a fire and the roller shutters open, you're gonna go that way. And so you need a call point by that exit point for you to alert everybody else that there's a fire in the building. So your manual type of system starts with fire alarm panel, manual call points. And the thing that's absolutely essential is um, a sounders. It needs to be 65 decibels in all areas. So when you you think about it, most, most of the time that means you need a sounders in virtually every room. Um, you can use wall mounted sounders, which are 100 decibels. You can use the, one, the ones that, that come underneath the smoke detectors, which are, are around 60, to, you know, sorry, 68 to 75 decibels. But that without the sounders, you, obviously your fire alarm's no use at all. Um, so the, the design requirement for fire alarm sounders are that you get 65 decibels in all areas, which should be uh, checked at the end of the commissioning once the fire alarm system is put in and, and it should all be added to the to your plans and so on. So you then move on to your P type system, which is your property and your and your L type system. Uh, P is for property and it's really an insurance requirement and it's an insurer's uh, uh, specification that they're coming across rather than a fire risk assessment where they're looking at their assets, which is what you store in your warehouse or, or what, the, what you have in your factory um, and, and so on. So they're looking at protecting their, the asset of the building with early warning um, and that's really where, where they are now. Um, in reality, it doesn't really get used much. Most of the time, um, it's, a, it's an L type system. So a P type system, I think I've seen it two or three times in my career and I've been doing this for 30 years, um, but it does exist. And then you've got the L, so P is P1 and P2. Um, I, I, so I didn't mention that, but P1 is everywhere. Um, and P2 is um, pick and choose where, you, where you're gonna put the, the detectors. Um, L uh, type system, which is life safety, um, is one to five. And there's no linear connection between one and five. So it doesn't start with this is the cheapest and it goes up to the most expensive, like a lot of people think it does. So it's L5, four, three, two, and one. So L5 is, the easy, is easy to explain because it's a fire risk assessor will come to your building, look at the risks and decide, well, you know, it doesn't fit any of the others, which is L1, 2, 3 and 4. So I'm going to put, I want a detector here, I want a detector there. It might be covering a, a, a plant room, it could be covering um, a server, uh, a room or cupboard, because particularly that might be under some stairs and they're thinking, well, okay, so we're going to pick that up before that causes a problem for everybody upstairs. But from a fire alarm company's point of view, the fire risk assessor has to name those rooms and those spaces, and they are taking responsibility for that design, um, which, as you can imagine, doesn't happen very often because it's, um, it's quite a liability to take on, but it does, they, they are out there and they, they do happen. So L5 is effectively bespoke, L4 is, um, if you imagine a, 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 an office building or a, a school, that you've got a corridor down the middle, um, and you put smoke detectors along the corridors, and that's it, and you put them in, in the, so there's none in the rooms, there's just in the corridors, and you put them in the stairs, um, so that's your escape route to, to, to the door. So um, that's what an L4 is. Um, that didn't exist until uh, about five or six years ago. Um, then, then you have L3, which is the same as L4, plus the rooms that affect that escape room. So now, with a smoke detector, you, you, they cover seven and a half metre radius. With an L3 system, you're only worried about the smoke leaking out of the room into the escape room. So if that's a bigger room and it would normally require, I don't know, five detectors, you'd only put one because you're worried about the smoke leaving that room and affecting your escape room. 
So that's an L3 system. L2 is exactly the same as L3, except for the fire risk assessor has decided that in that room, that's got a room within it, in the corner, there's a, there's a server cupboard. And I want a smoke detector in there. Only that, that's all I want. Well, it could be five server cupboards, or it could be a plant room. It could be all things like that. The risk assessor has looked at the risk and thought, I want an L3 um, system, but I want this as well. So that one or two changes will make the difference to an L2. So it's, it's like an L3, but it's bespoke. And then L1 is relatively easy to look at. An, L, an L1 system is um, every room that's bigger than a meter squared has a smoke detector in it. So that's large cupboards. Um, and L1, people will often look at a building and think, oh, you've got an L1 system. And in reality, it doesn't happen that often because if you look in cupboards, if they've got smoke, det smoke detectors in them, then you've got lots and lots of smoke detectors um, in, in the building. But an L1 would be that um, because the fire risk assessor has decided that this is high risk, there's, um, you know, you've got a lot of people in this building, I need to get them out, so I need to know the minute something, um, you know, is, 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 the, the smoke's in the building, uh, because the smoke is the issue as far as the life safety um, side of it. So that's L5 to L1, which is 90, 8% of the systems put in the UK, in my experience, are going to fall into those into those brackets and typically L3 is probably the most common, um, commonly used out of all of those systems. But you don't know until the fire risk assessment has been done.